Uh, thank you, Cindy, and thank you to everybody. So uh, I am postdoc at Benjamin Hipkins Lab. Uh, our talk today, I will talk. I will. Uh, I would like to highlight uh, the importance of using proteomics and master regulators for improving biomarker discovery and sensitivity analysis. Uh, so, as you know, in uh, the central dogma, we, we, we have the proteins as product of uh, DNA transcription and translation. Uh, however, we have uh, a lot of limitations and the challenges, and the challenges in proteomics data that uh, it is costly and uh, uh, even there is inconsistency between different proteomic profiles because it is not easy to, to, uh, to, to get the, such proteomics data. Uh, however, we have different types of omics data, either genomics, rna uh, mutation, copy number variations. So uh, our objective here and our rationale here is to try to um, avoid these challenges. Uh, in, uh, if we could do this, we can use the proteomics data in different applications, like we can use them to understand the drug mechanism of action, uh, spatial localization, understanding the pathways, signaling pathways, and mainly in this talk, we will focus about uh, biomarkers uh, using proteomics data for uh, biomarkers. Uh, but as we said, we, we don't have direct to use proteomics data. We, uh, for some cell lines, we have, we, have, we have them, but we have limitations to obtain them for other, uh, for other uh, cell lines. That's why in this talk we will, we will introduce uh, an approach to impair protein activity using gene expression. So first I would like to highlight what we are doing in our lab. So in our lab we developed uh, also a package for, for this purpose. Uh, we will impair the protein activity and use this approach in, in addition to what we are doing in our lab for improving the drug by market discovery. Uh, so, uh, first in uh, uh, this approach of inferring the protein activity, it takes an input, the gene expression, and then um, it reconstructs the regulatory network based on the gene expressions using an algorithm called Arachne. Uh, Arachne uh, it, it finds the, uh, uh, the regulatory net, the H HTTF or H, um, H uh, uh, transcription factor and its, its regulators. So using these uh, regulatory networks, we then apply uh, a, an algorithm called the Bybar. This algorithm was proposed by Andrea Califano in British Columbia. Uh, we, we discussed with him uh, about a year ago uh, the possibility of using his methodology in what we are doing in our lab. And hence, uh, I will be used uh, what he did and uh, 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 developed his approach and integrated it in, in, uh, in the packages we are doing in our lab for improving the biomarker discovery. So uh, Viber works by uh, inferring the master regulators or the protein coding genes or the transcription factors that control the regulatory mechanism inside the reconstructed regulatory network inferred using the Arachne approach. So um, in this way, we have the master regulators or the uh, main transcription factors that control the mechanism and we have its, its regulators or its regulating genes or its, its target genes. Uh, these regulators, using computational approach, uh, we can estimate or infer the activity of this transcription factor or this um, protein based on its regulator expression. So in this way, we can only use the gene expression to infer the protein activity. So using this approach, we could have, uh, we, we could label this regulatory network, and, uh, and for HTF, we can understand which of this, which of each targets either upregulated, upregulated up or downregulated, um, and hence we can estimate or calculate the score of this uh, transcription factor of this protein inside the network. And finally, we transform the, the gene expression matrix into protein activity matrix using this approach. So we adapted, uh, we, we used this, uh, the Califano mechanism in what we are doing in our lab. Uh, in our lab, as I said, we are trying uh, to, uh, to lead the community uh, for, or, or trying to, uh, to, to, to use for the community a methodology for biomarker discovery. We developed uh, a publicly available R package called Pharmacogx in Benjamin Hepkins' lab. So in this package, 
uh, using bank cancers, bank cancer cell lines, uh, and using the omic profiles, either RNA seq mutation, CNV, we try to discover which features or which biomarkers uh, that are uh, that can be used for the sensitivity analysis. So, given the omic profiles, we try to predict uh, that using the drug dose response carefully. Uh, which which of these which of these features or which of these genes uh, can be considered as biomarkers? So, to assess the the prediction uh, accuracy, uh, we use a, a concordance and index uh, consistency model. But in addition to that, in our lab we develop an improvement for this statistical approach for uh, assessment. We use a method called the modified concordance index to account for uh, and avoid the noisy data in the pharmacogenomics. So um, if, the accuracy, if the accuracy of the model, uh, CI, is equal to 1, this means that our prediction accuracy was, was perfect. But if it is 0, this means that it is, it is, it is inverse. I mean, the, the accuracy is not good. But if it is at uh, CI, uh, if it equals to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, this means that it is at random. So in this way, we also use some of the cell lines data that exist in the, uh, in the, in the literature. We, we use the CCLE in this study. In addition to that, in Pharmacogy X, we have, uh, we integrate and we, we, we will produce and store different cell lines, integrate them together for uh, the sensitivity analysis. Um, also, we extracted the uh, the, the, drug, uh, the, uh, the drug sensitivity uh, that is stored in CTRBV2 uh, for the sensitivity analysis models that we developed. So um, in our framework, we try to, first of all, we try to study uh, the consistency or the relation between different omics uh, profiles. So uh, we, we found that uh, Viber, the, the, at, the, at the left, uh, showing a correlation with rna seq data, and this is expected. Uh, we use for this the common cell lines between the different omic profiles, uh, and uh, and hence we found that uh, some there is a complementary message between omics. So some information can be found in specific omics like genomics, but at the same time, uh, also we also have some proteomics data in CCLE. There is uh, uh, RBBA assays. We use it and. Uh, we integrated all of these models at the end. So first, I would like to show the result using uh, non biomarkers. So we extracted some drugs uh, stored in CTRBV2. Some drugs have uh, a, a well-known biomarker in the literature. For instance, Lapatinib. For Lapatinib, it has ERPP2 as a gene expression biomarker. So uh, you, uh, we tested using the MCI, uh, the uh, the, uh, uh, the accuracy of the model. So Viber showed the best uh, prediction accuracy for, U, uh, for ERPP2 as a biomarker for labatinib. Um, then comes next rna -C. So we also find these profiles in other drugs, not only uh, those having rna -C as a biomarker, but for this drug uh, has PRAF, which is mutation biomarker, and also Viper outperforms the different models. We tested it, this also for other drugs, like Lertonib or uh, this drug, and also Viper showed the best MECI uh, result. So we show here uh, for different drugs the biomarker and um, the ranking of each model. So for the first one, as we said, um, Viper in, all, in uh, this one was was the highest one, then comes the rna -seq, then proteomics as a biomarker, of, uh, omics for, uh, for biomarker discovery, and at the end, we found CNV. And we, we are just ranking here the different drugs, and uh, uh, the message here is Viber was almost from the topmost models in predicting the, uh, for, for finding the biomarkers. But this was not the case for uh, some drugs like um, 17 AAG, which has NQ01. And also, we, we highlight that in this case, the proteomics data was not available. So, as we said at the beginning, 
is a uh, the proteomics data it would be great to have it but it is costly to to uh, to find the proteomics data in all cases uh, but viral here was ranked the second best model after RNAC and this is also interesting because um, RNAC in this drug has this this biomarker and it is RNAC based biomarker and also we found for this drug also viral was was showing in um, in, in, a, uh, in a good rank, let's say compared to, our, compared to proteomics data or other omics. So we found that using only one omic type is not enough, is not, may, may not be enough for uh, uh, predicting supply markers. And we think, uh, we, we, we decided to go for a further, further step by combining uh, omics, omics together. So here I just would like to uh, highlight ongoing research that we are doing. So we we just tested the different models, the different combinations. So we here we 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 just listed the types we have, and we ranked the models based on their performance, based on their MCI. So this is for Lapatinib. We performed a machine learning model using ElasticNet and ten, and take was for uh, cross validation. And the top most model was combining Viber and CNV. So we, we just uh, highlight here that combining different omics or omic type together improves the drug sensitivity prediction. And interestingly also, we find that, I mean, the, the same messages that we, we obtained from single omic uh, analysis, we found that Vibar is, is the top most compared to single omics, uh, single omic type like, like this one. Uh, we found also this, this uh, profile for different drugs so interestingly, I would like to highlight that Viber was part of the top most performing model. Uh, it, 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 it is uh, consistently was showing up as a part of the top most performing models for uh, sensitivity prediction uh, for, not, for, for, for most of the cases that, that we have shown. So to conclude my talk, I would like just to highlight that we should consider the protein level information in sensitivity analysis and biomarker discovery to understand the biology better. At the same time, uh, I highlight that uh, using Viber um, introduced uh, an, a new approach for improving the sens sensitivity analysis and the biomarker discovery for most of the drugs. Um, and there is no single omic type uh, that can be used for all of the drugs, but combining omics, omics together using machine learning approach can improve the uh, sensitivity, uh, sensitivity analysis. And Finally, um, in, when we combined the models together, we found that Viber was part of the top most performing models as well. Uh, at this point, I, I would like to thank you, and uh, I would like to thank Benjamin, I would like to thank John for, for today, and uh, any questions?